All right, we are live. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a great night camping out, whether you were in your backyard, in your front house, in your living room, your bedroom, wherever. I hope you all had a good time at the South Carolina Virtual Campout. I am Ranger Ann Wilson from Myrtle Beach State Park and uh, Ranger AJ is filming today so you might be hearing some you know questions and answers from AJ and we're gonna have a lot of fun today and I'm gonna give time to everybody in case you need to scramble to maybe get a couple of things that you may or may not have available if not this will be recorded too so you can do it later we're gonna you need a rock any type of rock uh, or a hammer a piece of wood something to bang uh, any type of fabric it could be an old t-shirt it could be look it's just an old sheet doesn't matter what kind of sheet old t-shirt pillowcase you know any type of fabric not a towel a towels not gonna work as well and then some type of tape masking tape works well you could use any other tape I like masking tape the best but if not we'll make it work so see if you can run around and get that I'm gonna talk a little bit about the park just to give everybody a couple of minutes to keep coming on uh, we're standing in front of this beautiful old live oak uh, this is in front of shelter one at Myrtle Beach State Park and we're, shelter one is a CCC park a civilian conservation core park and we are one of many CCC parks in South Carolina and really around the nation uh, to uh, have uh, be developed by the Cons civilian conservation Corps. and here's your fun fact for the day Myrtle Beach State Park was the first state park in South Carolina to open. We are not the first state park acquired. That belongs to Shiraz State Park, so you get that credit. But we did open our gates back in 1936. So that's a little history about Myrtle Beach State Park. We have 312 acres. We're a really tiny park in the middle of the Grand Strand. This tiny piece of green oasis in the middle of the Grand Strand where gets well over 15 million visitors a year. Our state park gets probably 1 to 1.5 million visitors a year. It's a crazy busy park, but we have this beautiful maritime forest and we have a mile's worth of beach and a fishing pier. So that's a little about, bit about the park. Should I go over the gear again, AJ? Uh, you can if you want to. There's like 150 people watching okay, right now. So yeah. So again, if you have time, if not, again, this will be this will be recorded. You can go later on. And we do have some wind issues. So if you're having trouble hearing us, um, let us know and AJ can cut the phone a little bit better. Um, we're excited we don't have rain. We thought we were gonna have rain and be inside today, but we're outside so we could have some wind issues. So we'll see how that goes. But you know when disaster strikes, that's when you have the best memories, right? Mm -hmm. So a rock, you're gonna get some leaves. You wanna get any type of leaf you can if you have in your yard. If not, again, you can do this craft another time. Uh, we're gonna, any type of sheet, uh, pillowcase, t-shirt, old t-shirt. Again, you don't have anything brand new. And some type of, I like masking tape best, but any type of tape should do. And then this is what our goal is. We're gonna be making leaf prints. And we made it into an educational tool. But you could, you know, you could, this could just be for fun, but you could send, you know, letters in the mail. How fun yeah. is that? That's pretty neat. You know, letters that are on fabric. There's a lot of mm -hmm. different things you can do, and we'll show you a couple <clears throat> different things. So without further ado, I think we'll go, we're gonna learn a bit, a little bit about different leaves that we have in the park that we collected this morning and maybe a little fun facts and then we'll actually go do the craft. Okay, so we're gonna come over here to this picnic table. And our first one that it's pretty common that most people have is sweet gum. As you can see, so this is the art that we created, and this was created probably five years ago. This, you know, this art stays around. And sweet gum, you can see it has the, the star-shaped leaves. The flowers have all fallen now, so they're all pretty old. And then, up oh, the wind came through, and we already lost our, oh, here's a sweet gum. This is well-known type of seed pod that a lot of people actually don't like in their yard, because if you step on it with bare feet, but man, is this great for wildlife food. One of the things I love best about sweet gum, if you have it in your yard, and keep in mind, we don't really want you to be picking live plants and flowers in state parks, national parks, county parks. So this is only because it would be a ranger-led program if we did this at the park, but to rip the leaf 
and smell it. And it smells, what do you think it smells like, AJ? I don't know. It smells really good. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's yeah. citrusy. Lemon. It is citrusy, yeah. Yeah, it's a great yeah. smell. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, back in the day, they used to slit the tree, which we talked about last night. We don't mm -hmm. like slitting trees, but to get the sap out for chewing gum. Yeah. I can't imagine it tasted good, right? No, I wouldn't think so. Well. Yeah. So today was a banner day. Tulip poplars are incredibly tall trees, 100, 150 feet tall plus, and their flowers are gorgeous and bloom high up in the tree. And unless the wind, which we had a lot of wind last night, blows the flowers down, you almost never see them, but are they not gorgeous? So pretty. I love them. And like I said, they're just all over this one section of road that we had today. So they have really cool leaves. And this is a, um, a host plant for tiger swallowtails? Tiger swallowtails. A beautiful butterfly and a, a good source of food for a lot of different animals. And then this is my favorite flower or favorite tree. It's a small tree. It's called a red bud. And again, we've lost the leaf. We had this burst of wind about 10 minutes ago and it literally blew everything away. But they, and I think we have them over later when we do it, they have beautiful heart shaped leaves. So this is, you can make, you know, thank you letters or love letters to someone you love, you know, with hearts. But in the spring, and they're just about all done blooming, they have these beautiful pink flowers, which are edible. Oh. Yeah. That's kind of fun. It might, they don't really taste like anything, but it's pretty on a salad. Mm -hmm. And then this is a fun, if you have ferns, and there's lots of different ferns out there. The ferns, I mean, look how gorgeous this is. But this took a while. That's a lot of banging, as you're going to find out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. But a netted chain fern. And the fern was used by the Native Americans for basketry and weaving, which is kind of fun. It is neat. And then Virginia creeper, if you were watching us last night, we talked about Virginia creeper. It has five leaflets. Poison ivy has three. three. And uh, so this is totally harmless. It works well for leaf yard. And you can see I'm doing different techniques that we'll talk about. This one we just did the whole leaf and this one we did the outline. And I'll be honest with you, I really like the outline better, but that's a personal preference. Mm -hmm. And they turn a brilliant red in the fall. I love them as a fall color. Even, oh, here we go. <laughs> here comes the wind. Here comes the wind. And then we have red maple, which every time of year, part of the year, we have red on the leaf somewhere. And again, the leaves blew away. But the um, windmills, you know, the helicopter mm -hmm. seed pods, beautiful little flowers that a lot of people don't notice, usually in February. And so those make great leaf prints too. So we're going to, and so you're going to now meet Scott, my fiance, and he's trying to hold down. <laughs> now, it's, oh, I forgot. Just have it. I'm gonna. I have to get my rock. Ah, I gotcha. Don't forget your rock. All right. So again. Woo! Oh, oh. <laughs> that would have been bad. I guess. I guess I've gained a little weight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Quarantine. <laughs> well, that would have been fun, right? Oh, As goodness. I was saying, you know, sometimes the best memories when you're camping are not the ones that go smoothly. It's when the rain floods your campsite. It's when you almost tip the table over. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite I'll stick um, a leg up there. How about yeah, that? Yeah, I guess but. we just moved this table right before filming again, and clearly... <laughs> it's not very level. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was fun. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, <laughs> this is all this, this would be a perfect setup. And your, what you have right now is not gonna be a perfect setup, and that's okay. Uh, I like using a piece of cardboard to try to deaden the sound a little bit, and also protect tables, but you know what? You can sit on the ground, mm -hmm. for sure. I would not do this on a tile floor, though. <laughs> no, that'd probably be a bad idea. And even idea. carpeting would be tough. Yeah. So, you need a hard surface. Yeah, hard you need surface. a hard surface. Definitely a hard surface. So it'd be yeah. best if you can go outside. So again, you may not be able to do this today, but this is so easy that you can do this later. And mm -hmm. again, this will be on tape. So what you're going to do, you take leaves and like, I have a, this is a, a muscadine grapevine. Mm -hmm. I have a red mulberry. So it's really about trying to get leaves that have lots of different textures and shapes. You know, leaves that are interesting. Um, this is a magnolia leaf and it's not going to work very well. One, it's also, to me, while magnolia trees are beautiful, it's kind of a boring leaf. A little bit. But it's an opinion, just an opinion. 
okay? But it's also, we're not gonna be able to bang the chlorophyll out very well. Um, this is a great one. This is sassafras. And both red mulberry and sassafras, they have different leaves on the same tree, hmm. which is pretty cool. So that can make, um, do we, oh, like red mulberry here. Three different leaves. So that's a great educational that's pretty cool. thing to learn about. And sassafras, it's a host plant to uh, spice bush swallowtail butterfly. Huh. So very important. And if you have spice bush in your yard and you go outside and you look for leaves that are folded up like this, the caterpillar forms a little silken connection to hold the leaf together and hide in during the day. So if you carefully open that up, a lot of times there'll be a spice bush swallowtail butterfly or caterpillar in the leaf. So it's an easy caterpillar to find if you have sassafras this time of year. And sassafras tends to go in open areas. Yes. It's really an early succession plant. Scott, he's a 30-year veteran of North Carolina State Park. So we're nor merging North Carolina and South Carolina State Parks <laughs> together. Scott really knows his insects. Yeah. Loves insects. Okay, so so let's take, well, I'm going to do, where did I, well, I'll do a sassafras. Do you have a leaf you're going to do? No. No? Okay. What do you want to do? Oh, you want to do sweet gum? We're going to do small leaves. So what you're going to do, so you, we already did a few today. Mm -hmm. So get you an idea. So we are turning it over. And we're going, oh, did you hear the pileated woodpecker? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take the leaf and you're going to turn it over like that. So face down. Face down, exactly. And then you're going to take your masking tape. And again, if you don't have tape, I say take another piece of fabric to sandwich it down. Mm -hmm. The great thing with tape, can you see AJ? Yeah. <laughs> the great thing with tape, and I, if you, again, this is a perfect roll. If you have thicker tape, it just takes less time. Um, you try to flatten it out, okay? So flatten it out. But again, I haven't tried other types of tape, but you know, that's also the fun thing of just experimenting. Does duct tape mm -hmm. work or is it too messy? Scotch tape, I don't know, you could try it. What do you have to lose? A few leaves. And again, we always, uh, we don't want you to pick plants and flowers in state parks, but when we're doing programs like that, we give special permission. So keep that in mind. So we have the tape, okay? And now Scott, when he did it for the first time this morning, and I just started banging, because I'm like, oh, we know what to do. He's banging on this. And while it will work, it's more fun to watch your what's going on when you turn it over. Okay? So you actually see the print coming through. So you can see the through. print that's coming through. Gotcha. And now you have to decide, you know, like this was a leerly sage, all those beautiful purple flowers that are growing along roadsides, mm -hmm. open fields. Um, you know, like. It had cool colors on it, but it, to me, it just turned into a blobby mess. <laughs> and then um, there's so many caterpillars. There are tons. There's one on your neck. Scott's and, gonna talk yeah. more about caterpillars here in a minute. This was the a smaller version of a muscadine grapevine, and I just did the edge, and then I tried to do more like the leaf veins. So again, this is all um, it's, it's art. You can't go wrong. And then this is what I discovered today. I was so excited. So with all these tulip poplars falling down. I took a flower petal and I had no idea what would happen. I've never done it. And some of you are probably going, well, of course that would happen, Ranger Ann, but hey, I didn't know. And I taped it down and look, I got orange and yellow. How cool is that? Great. I know, I was so excited. Self-discovery is so much fun, right? <laughs> okay, so now, and this is the loud part. So we're gonna just bang for like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, because really, how long can we bang? You guys will get the drip. It gets really loud, adults, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. part of the fun. Done. I think you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see they're a little bit different colors green. And you can see two different techniques and we didn't even plan on what we were going to do. I just went for the edging. Scott went for the whole thing. I will say the bigger leaf you go, the more pounding you have. So if you have a lot of time on your hands, get a huge leaf. Right. But you're going to be there a while. But you can then you can go different artistic techniques where you can 
you know, maybe make the outline and then if it's a big leaf, you just make maybe speckles and spatter. I mean, mm -hmm. there's so many different things you can do. And so basically it's a big grass stain. Yeah. But here's the cool thing that I like. Let's do stuff. Barkley says it's not a project to do during quiet hours in the campground. No, so. <laughs> so not between 10 and 7. Here's the other cool thing that I love with the tape. And Jenny, yes, that is fabric. So they're using like a old cut up sheet or an old cut up t-shirt, something like that, um, that you can use to Pillow do that. Case. So. Uh, you know, like a towel, it, it, it's going to have too much, um, too floofy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> too yeah exactly. Floofy. I don't think it's going to work, but again, you can try it. It's gotta be but, thin. Yeah. It's got to be some kind just, of thin fabric. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. So kind of fun. It is pretty neat. And so yeah. again, this is a good way, if, again, if you're, if you're, everybody's homeschooling right now, there's no if. So you can learn your different leaves while you're doing art. Um, again, it is very loud, but you know, like we did this, where we did, these are heart, this was the red bud, it's the heart leaves. You can see this is a big one, and I even got the leaf vein. And then we did some paintings on it. Mm -hmm. You know, we did that. One thing I do notice, a lot of times when you do the stems, they um there's a lot more liquid in the stems and sometimes it just it i don't know the technical word for it too it, much liquid too much liquid and it just i don't like it as much and again when it's art it's not wrong mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you like it as much i don't think it has to be white fabric miranda but it needs to be some kind of light, light. colored to show up on it yeah. and i think you could even I mean, if it was speckled fabric, you know, you could try light blues and light greens. Right, or some kind of print, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Could you use a paper? A I think you could maybe try some paper, heavy but paper. Yeah. I'm just wondering yeah. if it would get. It may not be as porous as the. Yeah, or maybe if you did, if you had, if you only had paper and you did have masking tape. Maybe if you did two layers of masking tape to try to protect the paper as you're And use it. your rock on the masking tape side, maybe, instead For of on sure. the paper side. Yeah. Um, or maybe this is where duct tape might work well. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, it could. Just, yeah. You're trying to protect that paper. Right. I'll be honest with you, we've never tried paper. But again, you have time. That's Especially right. if you don't have any fabric. Have you tried to wash them before? Does it come out if you wash them? Uh, it, it is a grass stain, mm -hmm. so eventually it'll come out. Yeah. Um, I have... We have tried soaking it in the vinegar, mm -hmm. you know, soaking in vinegar to set it. I have not really done many t-shirts. I've done more, you know, where we, you know, I had a sewer and we, we did it more artistic. But again, this is five years running. So it holds a long time, yeah. but it is going to fade if you're in the sun. But that hasn't been washed. No, it hasn't right. been washed, mm -hmm. but you can see the difference. It does fade. Yeah. So try the vinegar and then you can see another way that another um, volunteer, she just went to town mm -hmm. now and you know michaels are closed now but there's just so many things you can do it and like see how we went artistic here you can there's so many different things you can do you know let your imagination run wild yep any other questions on technique no not yet no. um scott so i don't know if this is happening throughout the whole state or just along the coast or for all i know myrtle beach state park we are being inundated with these caterpillars. I mean, literally, you can see them literally raining They're down on us. Everywhere. And so Scott's going to do, do a quick little talk about these caterpillars because they're really fascinating and it's an important part of the ecosystem. Yeah, these are um, the caterpillars we have all over right now are a species that's common in the spring all across the state and they're called forest tent caterpillars. Um, and they're uh, very uh, gregarious and when we have a we usually have large numbers of them in the spring, uh, but this spring seems to be an uh, extraordinarily large amount of these guys. And you can see that we also have another caterpillar that's similar that we're having here on the table now. I think they're pretty much done, but we have eastern tent caterpillars, which are similar, but the eastern tent caterpillar would have a yellow uh, stripe along the edge, and this one has nice blue. And the other thing this one has, if you look closely on the back of these guys, they're gorgeous. They have these little yellow spots that look almost like footprints. Mm -hmm. So that'll try. help you. Uh, yeah. AJ you did this. this, discovered this new technique again right before we went filming. So it's going to get a little wonky here for a little bit, but if this works, it's really she's cool. She's got a hand lens she's just me. putting up to her, her phone. And you can see those little yellow spots that look almost like footprints. So this is the. So it's work. just a magnifying yeah, lens, it's a like a little small lens. magnifying yeah. lens. Uh, so these are forest tent caterpillars. Um, they're pretty cool. You'll sometimes see them um, 
and it gathered in mass on the trunks of trees. You know, that had 100, 200 in one big mass. And they'll rest there sometimes after they're feeding in these large groups. And they find their way back and forth to these places where they kind of rest by laying down this uh, silken path on the trunk that they're able to, to smell evidently. While you're there, why don't you show the... And then you also stuff. notice um, <laughs> all over... Uh, it's getting, raining down on us right now too. This is uh, what you might think it is. It's caterpillar poop. And it's also called... Um, frass is a term that's often used to describe uh, excrement from insects, caterpillars and things like that. How do you spell that? F-R-A-S-S. So yeah. yesterday we talked about dog poop, today we talk about caterpillar poop. That's it's right. so exciting. <laughs> so these guys feed on the, cat, the, the moth, which is uh, not nearly as pretty as the caterpillar. This is what these caterpillars will turn into. This is the forest tent caterpillar. And here for comparison is the eastern tent caterpillar on the other side. I think they're mostly done. Eastern tent caterpillar is the one where you see they build these uh, webs in the crotches of cherries and pecan trees in the early spring and they'll go out and feed and go back into their little web nest to digest the food for, to, and also be protected from a lot of predators. But as I'm saying, they're very important. Uh, right now, you can hear all the bird sounds and bird calls all around us. Mm -hmm. um, caterpillars make up a, a big percentage of a lot of the spring food for a lot of birds that are migrating to the area and a lot of birds are nesting and feeding their young. So uh, they're really important in moving that energy up the, up the food chain. So yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're cool critters and they're everywhere. They are everywhere. The birds must be so fat right now. <laughs> so fat. There's tons just yeah. all on the picnic table and that we're using. They didn't always yeah. start here just before we started this program. They've literally been raining down on us, so it's kind of fun. And another reason these forest tent caterpillars are one so... one on the end shoulder. <laughs> so abundant is they, uh, they feed the, the moth, mm -hmm. the female moth lays her eggs on a wide variety of different uh, deciduous trees out here. Uh, so they feed on just about anything, whereas like the uh, tiger swallowtail, we use uh, poplar and a couple other plants. There are some butterflies and moths That's that awesome. are um, specific, just a handful of plants. Mm -hmm. uh, like red bay, right? Like red bay, there's a um, Which we don't a have leaf swallowtail of red bay. butterfly lays her eggs on red bay. And that's Only? It. Yeah. So if we lose the red bay, we lose a palomini swallowtail. Mm -hmm. So while you might think all oh, this is kind of gross and this frass is gross, this is nature at its finest and incredibly valuable. All those birds that you're loving right now, you know, that are at your bird feeders or as a lot of bird watchers right now, are just itching to get outside because spring migrants are on their way from Central and South America and they're just gorging on all these caterpillars. I mean, even right here, and we don't know what this caterpillar is. I'll figure that one out. But, you know, we've got, where'd it go? Oh, it's right here, you know. Look at this tiny little guy. I forgot what just that is. great camouflage. It's, it's a like, moth caterpillar. Looks like a, uh, a little tree limb. There it goes. Now it's focused. Look at it inching away. I know. I'll figure that one out and let y'all know. So pretty cool. All right, so who knew we turned leaf art into Caterpillar 101? Lessons, right. But that's yeah. kind of fun. Uh, do we have <laughs> Barkley says, how long are the caterpillars versus the moth? So are they like a size difference? Like No, so mm -hmm. that's caterpillars, butterflies and moths mm -hmm. lay eggs that produce caterpillars. So the caterpillars are the the young or the larva of uh, butterflies and moths. And really, uh, there's there's no good way to, to, you just have to start studying to know which is a butterfly caterpillar mm -hmm. versus a moth caterpillar. And the, these moths, these moth, when they turn into moth, I'm gonna guess like this. Like... Well, this particular species, they're small, small yeah, moths. Yeah, it's small. So, I'm not sure, is I don't that know what she was asking? Yeah, I think she's meaning is if the caterpillar is longer, is the butterfly or moth gonna be longer? Uh, uh, bigger. Bigger, yeah. More or less. Oh, she says long in time, life expectancy. Oh, life expectancy. oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get okay. that. So. <laughs> Those caterpillars, uh, these guys go through about um, five to seven or eight molts. They shed their skin as they grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once Constantly they, eating. Constantly feeding and eating. And once they get to that seventh, sixth, seventh, to eight, um, eighth molt, they go into a cocoon or caterpillar or, or to a uh, chrysalis or butterfly. And they merge. So the adults are short-lived. Some may only fly for two or three weeks at a time. Some of the uh, big, like big luna moths, mm. 
they only fly for about a week or so, and they um, and they die. So it varies. And they don't species. even feed, right? The luna the moths, a lot of silk moths don't feed as, as adults. An adult. huh. Their sole purpose is to uh, to find a mate and lay eggs. So it varies from species to species how long they live. But most butterflies and moths don't live long at all. Somebody says, can we hold these? Okay, that's a good question. These are mm -hmm. safe to touch. There are some caterpillars out there that um, have stinging hairs. I don't know if I can find one real yeah, quick. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a group of caterpillars, Keep moth talking. caterpillars, called um, the slug moths in the front. Huh. Um, like that these? have stinging no, Look for the slugs that are in front. Very fine. But yeah, you just have oh. to, yeah. So a lot of these guys, here's one that one. has a, aptly named the stinging rose caterpillar. They're, there are not many, but any, um, a lot of people um, are a more allergic to things than other people, but these guys have these um, stinging hairs on them that are pretty painful reaction. Aren't they gorgeous? So, <laughs> they're very uh, pretty. Like, look at if that you're not wow. sure, It's really yeah, cool. If you're not yeah. sure, you know, of course, best thing to do is not touch them, but the majority of them are, are not gonna, are not harmful, but those slug caterpillars are- um, Here's the book we're using. Yeah. Yep. Caterpillars of Eastern North America. Good questions. I, I, I know. Where do you? <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. Oh. Um, so if nobody has any other questions. We do have a ton of other programs going on today. Again, it's every hour on the hour from now until 9 p.m. tonight. And hopefully everybody's going to be good with... I think we're supposed to get rain later on. I don't know what's going on in the upstate. Yeah, around. I don't know. I know the coast is supposed to have yeah, a little so bit of rain. Yeah, so next program at 11 o'clock is going to be a joint presentation between Red Cliff Plantation and Rose Hill Plantation State Historic Sites. And they're going to talk about wild edibles. We talked about, um, you know, like the red bud that you can eat that flower. Edisto at noon is going to be talking about nature journaling and backyard bird or backyard watching. Then there's going to be, ooh, this sounds fun, at 2 p.m. by Over Mountain. How to play an 18th century camp tavern game with household items. So there you go. Everybody has that mm -hmm. that you can um, play. So that will be fun at 2 o'clock. Ooh, you're going to learn how, how um, they handled secret messages during the Revolutionary War. That's pretty at neat. At 3 o'clock. How fun is that? Yeah. And we're going to learn how to cook doughboys, of which we said last night. I don't... I don't know what a doughboy is yet. So, oh, you know, this is great stuff that we can all, as park rangers, we can learn from each other also while we're self-isolating and everything like that. So all the way until 9 p.m. tonight. So go on if you don't have the schedule and you just somehow found us today. Go to the South Carolina Virtual Campout Facebook mm -hmm. page and you'll get the whole schedule. And some will be fit, will be live versions like we're doing today. Others will be pre-recorded. And again, I, I believe, I hope I'm not misspeaking, that everything eventually will go to the video and you can watch it later on if you're missing it or you need to go back and look at a technique or how did, how did, how did we make that dough boy or whatever, you could go back and look at that later. Everything from last night. Oh, here we go. Oh, here comes the wind. <laughs> everything from last night is on video. So I didn't find the my bird migration. Somehow I missed that. Yep. But I'm sure it's there somewhere. Right. Anyway, any other questions? Okay, everybody, well, have fun. Um, we had fun showing this to you. We hope you get, gained a little bit of knowledge and you have a little fun with your art, whether you can do it today or you have to do it a couple days from now. That is all good. Have fun with your camp out the rest of the night. And we're signing out, Ann and Scott from Myrtle Beach State Park. Good day. Have a good day.